Making homemade bread doesn't need to be difficult. With Breville's Custom Loaf, you can bring a world of flavours beyond the bakery and add anything you want without all the preservatives. It's as simple as adding your ingredients, selecting your loaf size and browning preference, and the custom loaf does the rest. The intuitive LCD screen lets you scroll through 13 settings with light, medium or dark colour crust options and it bakes up to two and a half pound family sized loaf. The instruction booklet is a great place to choose from one of 44 step-by-step -step recipes or you can customise a family favourite. We're going to make sun-dried tomato and feta bread which will use the default crusty loaf setting that can be also modified if needed. You'll see that there are two paddles. The dark collapsible paddle, that's for the bread and that will collapse and leave less of a hole in the base of the loaf. And then the fixed paddle, and that's just for jam. To begin, always take the bread pan out and add all the ingredients while it's out on the counter and make sure the collapsible paddle is in the upright position. The most important thing to bear in mind when making bread is to use exact measurements. To start, get all your ingredients out and ready on the counter in the order that it's listed in the recipe. And this always goes liquids, fats, dry ingredients and finally yeast. And everything should be at room temperature since this can actually affect the yeast's activation and the way that the bread ultimately rises and bakes. For liquids, only use liquid measuring jugs or cups and check the level while it's on the counter to make sure that the amount is exact. So here we have one and a half cups of water and one extra tablespoon. Consider using filtered or bottled water because the additives in tap water can actually affect the way the yeast rises. Three tablespoons of olive oil. And for the dry ingredients, we have one and a half teaspoons of salt, three quarter teaspoon of vital wheat gluten, which actually improves the loaf height, texture and structure. One and a quarter teaspoons of dried basil. One and a quarter teaspoons of oregano. And precisely four cups plus two tablespoons of bread flour. This flour has more protein than all purpose flour, making for stronger gluten and lighter, fluffier loaves. With all dry ingredients, either pour the bread flour into a cup or add it with a spoon and then level it off with the back of a knife to make sure that the measurement is exact. But don't tap the cup since this will cause the flour to settle and never use the cup to scoop directly from the flour packet as this will compact it and you'll end up with extra and that will affect the doughy consistency. Lastly, we have one and three quarter teaspoons of fresh active dry yeast. Active dry yeast works the best, but make sure it doesn't come into contact with wet ingredients and this will ensure the dough mixes and rises properly and be careful with the quantity. Too little yeast and the bread won't rise. Too much, it will rise, but then quickly collapse. And now add the ingredients to the pan. Got some liquid and then the fat and then the dry salt, vital wheat gluten, basil, oregano, then the flour and then the yeast. Be sure to wipe any spilled ingredients from the rim of the pan so it doesn't drop into the baking chamber. And now the bread pan's ready to go in, just align the wing nut with the drive mechanism inside the baking chamber. Just lower it in. It may take a little bit of jostling but it definitely clicks into place. And then lower the lid. And this recipe calls for sun-dried tomatoes and feta which go straight into the automatic fruit and nut dispenser. You can really jazz up any white loaf with dried fruit, nuts, chocolate chips and seeds even as they drop down at exactly the right time and you don't have to stand by to monitor the progress. Any soggy food such as these sun-dried tomatoes or feta should be well drained and patted down dry on paper towel. If you have the dried packet version of sun-dried tomatoes, they'll work too. Now shut the lid of the dispenser and set the dial to crusty loaf which will give you a crisp crust on the outside, but chewy on the inside. There are no colour crust options, but by using the modify button, you could tailor the baking temperature or time for a harder or softer crust. And I'm going to change it to two pounds and then press select. And now press start. You can press the light to see inside the baking chamber as the dough cycles through. There's preheat, Need one, need two, where you'll see the dough ball being tossed around by the paddle. And monitor the consistency of the dough because factors like humidity or flour measurement can affect it. Eight minutes before the end of the need two cycle, 
the automatic fruit and nut dispenser will release the sun-dried tomato and feta. And then the loaf will go into rise one and two with punch down modes. Then into rise three. And finally, the bread maker goes into the bake mode where you'll see the steam rise from the vents, which is completely normal. When the loaf's baked, take it out and let it cool on a drying rack for 20 minutes before slicing. If you try to slice too early, that can affect the structure of the bread. And with the 13 hour delay timer, you can wake to the wonderful aroma of fresh baked bread. The Custom Loaf, brought to you by the Food Thinkers at Breville.